The Senate has suspended Senator Abdul Nengi for three months of an allegation of 3.7 trillion naira padded into the 2024 budget. Nengi is the chairman, Senate Committee on Population, and represents the PDP Bauchi Central. While the parties called for a probe into the allegation, some northern senators disowned the claims made by Nengi, saying the Bauchi State Senator did not speak for them. The Bauchi Senator, however, maintained his position on Monday that 3.7 trillion naira could not be accounted for in the 2024 budget. Now for this conversation, we are now turning to Arise News Analyst, Dr. Sam Ahmadi. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Well, Dr. Amadi, what are your thoughts on the drama that we witnessed, you know, on the floor of the Senate? Uh, the senators kept saying that they had to protect the integrity of the Senate. Has that been achieved? Was their integrity, you know, intact in the first place? Well, I think first, uh, I would say it has been achieved. Uh, the Senate is self-regulating, uh, the National Assembly for that matter, and therefore uh, they have procedures to manage themselves. First, I think it's a little bit, the spectacle was disgraceful uh, to see the fury in terms of interdicting, prosecuting a senator for statements he made which could be reported by the Senate spokesperson, uh, which they have shown maybe he got some facts wrong, maybe he didn't consider the other appropriation for some parasita agencies that have direct uh, appropriation uh, uh, submission to the Senate. And so the fact that he made those statements, they, could not be, they may not be true or probably slanted in a different way, it was enough for the Senate to report, to report it and uh, his other senators to express anger displeasure at a statement, which is normal. I mean, it's not good, a good thing to see the effort to heckle, to kind of prosecute. I mean, somebody alleged that, look, um, this cast a special on the presidency. Somebody talked about how uh, the president is working hard. Those are important. So even if he alleges against the presidency and they have responded, I didn't think, I don't think the spectacle was uh, was very useful. Again, it speaks to form of indolence. I mean, these guys left all the real issues affecting the nation and doubled down on you know basically making a month out of a molehill. End of the day, he suspended. I think he basically wanted to be suspended or didn't care. Last night when he came to Arise News and I met him, he sounded like somebody who didn't care about being suspended. Uh, he has been there for 17 years. Uh, so three months suspension really is not a big deal. But again, sitting back and saying, have the national, did the Senate clear itself in terms of it's uh, much talked about discredit? I don't think so. I, I think probably they should have issued a statement, basically destroy his claim, uh, maybe allow his, their media person to hold a press conference, fellow senators castigate him, and let that slide. I mean, this spectacle didn't position the national the Senate in good light at all. All right, Dr. Sam Amali, like you just mentioned, do the Senate really care about their image from all you've seen? Because the truth is this, how does this dispel the rumors that there are corruption and rot within the system? I think uh, it's largely contrived. I mean, uh, listen to the senator's talk. There was so much passion about their reputation. Somebody, one of them claimed he, he couldn't go back to his village again, that uh, since that day he has totally become useless. I mean, come on. If that statement is what to make the Senate discreditable, then it's already a discredited Senate altogether. So I don't think, I think it's contrived. I think it's a drama. I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> did, they, did they probably wanted to use it to kind of uh, wash away several sins, quote unquote, but it didn't work. One of the things the Senate should do, I mean, I was, a, I was an advisor to Ken Namani uh, when he came in, when the Senate had bad reputation, the type of Mwambara and other allegations about corruption and impeachment. The first two things that made the Senate credible then was that they got themselves completely out of procurement, you know, issues about money. What caused a the crisis then was, you know, trying to go to the parastatas and ask for money to fund it. That was when it was made, no Senate committee ever goes to solicit for funding. So you have to build this credibility by the quality of 
you know, legislative intervention, by the quality of resolutions, by intervention, by things you do, and how you make yourself open to the people, their finances. You know, so I, I think look, they are not ready to face the fact that their conduct or their the, the optics of how they manage themselves uh, is, is less than credible. So this beating about the bush really doesn't further damage their credibility. The National Assembly has to take some extraordinary action. Disclosure of earning, reduction of the perks and office, of offices, you, you know, some things that radically transforms public perception of what they do. This kind of, um, you, know, um, you know, if you like, cop out or trying to uh, shadow boxing or you know, killing uh, an ant with uh, a hammer, sledgehammer, like in this case, it's not going to redefine the, next, the, the Senate. I think the House seems to be getting it better, and I think the Senate should try to think around innovative actions, think around partnership with civil society, think around more transparency, change the way they communicate and the way they act, and you know, give disgorge themselves of some privileges maybe that will, kick, will bring them back to the part of integrity. Now, Dr. Amade, I'd like us to talk a bit about the budgeting process. Now, some analysts believe that the senators, you know, or the House of Assembly rushed into passing the 2024 budget, and that's probably well, why we're having this controversy of our, over budget pardon, you know, and others. What are your thoughts on this? I think it came out in the earlier speech by one of the senators who talked about the fact that uh, he's not a senator. I mean, they did spend up to more than a month. I, I think the first, the, the, the temperament of the Senate work is that you know, the senators see themselves as largely supporting the presidency. Maybe um, Abibio is doing exactly that, what uh, the previous uh, Lawan did, which is wrong. Uh, when I was there too, we talked about three concepts of National Assembly executive relationship. The first we call sub, uh, subordination. I mean, the National Assembly sees itself as just a department of the executive president. The second is, you know, uh, antagonism. You just, you know what, we're gonna fight the president, whatever it does. But the third, which we recommend is the third way, we call the co-co management, interdependency. And what that requires is that the National Assembly considers itself as a co-manager of the economy. And what that requires is scrutiny, rigor, and sometimes distance. So if a parent brings a budget, three things. One, enough, enough lead time for thorough sectoral review. Two, much disclosure, public knowledge of processes. <laughs> if you look at elsewhere in the world, I mean, everybody gets to know the budget, everybody gets to know the thinking of the National Assembly, everybody gets to know the issues that they are fighting in terms of different opposition parties, Labour Party, but we didn't see the Labour Party was absolutely you know, you know, inefficient. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a Labour senator or House of Assembly member in that place. They don't fight for anything. The PDP doesn't lead strong you know, um, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, attack in terms of saying this budget doesn't reflect priorities or these items are not high. Now, the, the second issue, third issue is issue of variation. I mean, debate has been there in terms of budgetary law. Uh, Professor Mabese argued that the National Assembly has the power to vary, you know, presidential estimate, but don't have the power to add extra, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, budget heads. So yes, the National Assembly may vary. But the point is that we don't seem to see scrutiny, rigor. Take time, study these budgets, and the process themselves reflect that rigorous consideration. It, it looks like it's open and closed. You know, we just really want to give the president the budget he wants. So the, the, the consequence of this is that people see as, as maybe deal making, you know, uh, the allegations come. So I think that the process of senatorial or National Assembly review of national budget for appropriation, which is the key work they do that the Constitution provides for uh, and requires you know, the two houses joint uh, assent to third vote should be a lot more structured and procedural. The, the, the National Assembly should develop much more rigorous procedure for getting things done. I mean, if you look at the US Congress, there are too, there are too many clear processes have to go through. Sometimes those processes can even threaten to shut down government. But they follow those processes. I think there is so much less rigor, less procedure for rulemaking in Nigeria. If you go to Senate rules and the House rules, they, they, they kind of do not create too many um, processes for second guessing, for reviews. 
Even in other parliaments, there are roles for even the clerk, roles for non uh, legislators who are managers of the National Assembly. And so people can call in for those reports, look at them, study them, and then, you know, even those of us who are outside, we will better judge how the legislators are applying their mind. And it affects adjudication. For example, if you look at American administrative and constitutional law, there's so much references to, you know, what you call legislative history. How the National Assembly, the, the thinking, the submission, the ideas and the, and, the, and the arguments that legislators put in while making the law. It's a significant guide to legal interpretation, judicial interpretation of those laws because the procedure is robust. It allows for those deliberations and captured in re on record so that researchers, uh, legal interpreters, judicial actors have materials to see how each person's mind worked. So when you have this kind of process, you have less room for rumor mongering, for fictitious you know, uh, statements by maybe legislators or other people saying, oh, budget pardon, no budget pardon. We shouldn't be saying it's, it's true, it's not true, you know, I, I, I accuse you, you deny. No, there should be reprocess that tells a story from the one the budget submitted to passage. You can go back to the records and see everything discussions, denials, refutations, amendments, respecifications, those should be on record. So I think that that need to expand the rigorous nature of parliamentary discourse in Nigeria. It's too uh, prosaic and straightforward and just open and close. Uh, even the way they deliberate in the house. If you, li if you listen to the debate, after maybe a few hours, they have to close by two o'clock. Somebody will not signal, let's go to vote. And uh, maybe they vote, voice vote. Whether sometimes no is more than high. Uh, yes, and then everything is just, the gravity goes down and the matter goes. I think that's what is causing the problem. The press of rulemaking, is not is shallow. It's not well developed, and needs to be developed. All right, um, you're talking about the sufficient nature of this rule making. Uh, the chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriations, Senator Olamilekom uh, Adiola, has actually said, or rather proposed, that no more closed door sessions. That everything should be let bear in the open. Do you think this is the way out of all this quagmire we find ourselves right now? I think one of the one of the ways. I mean, the National Assembly, not just this one, has has transacted too often as if it's a, a deal making chamber. I mean, the, whether it's national security, they will say they want to interrogate the chief of army staff on terrible state of insecurity. Don't make a come, they say executive session. And then that's not the way issue. I've said that several times. They should be having too many executive sessions. What they have in parliament across the world is that if, they, if it's a matter that is sensitive, they can have what they call committee hearing. After which those documents, those processes can be re redacted and published. The essence is to preserve some state security. Not the one of invite uh, the uh, central bank governor is a good session. You invite the uh, minister of road works. That's nothing to do with security. Uh, or, or executive session. You invite road safety CEO, everybody, executive session. And then you go there, you speak in tongues, maybe. So it suggests that it's all about deal making. So I agree with him that they should ban executive uh, session. They can have specialized security briefings where it's in the interest of national, in national interest to have selected committees. In fact, in the US system, there are briefings for not every senator even. Select members, for example, of the Defense Committee or the Foreign, Af Foreign Affairs Committee, those are briefings that are later you know, translated, written down, or redacted for public consumption. So I think we should end this notion. The National Assembly is a, is a deal-making platform. It's where senators go to villa and receive it for the president, and then they invite somebody, and then they talk in, chamber, in, in secret, and then the person goes home. No, that's what fuels. In fact, uh, even in the National Assembly, some senators themselves are not even assured of the transparency of their own procedure. He heard some people talk about they don't even understand the procedure 
why constituency projects some have to attract more or less. Somebody seemed to be suggesting that there's some unfairness in terms of uh, constituency projects. So if the senator himself, ranking two, does not understand the, the procedure, criteria for choice or decision around constituency projects, say somehow 500 billion, others have less, that suggests to you that the entire process needs more you know, objectivity, transparency, and accountability. Uh, and that should start with you know, dismissing this notion. I don't know how they got the idea of executive session. Every time, I mean, it started in the days of impeachment, in the days of, of Gara Mosgo and Brana Peel, and then, you know, small matter, people say, okay, let's go to secret chamber and uh, negotiate. That's not how parliaments work. Now, Dr. Amadi, I'd like to focus on comments made by Senator Bayami Bamidele, who believes that this whole budget pardon controversy was targeted at destabilizing Akwabio's leadership of the Senate. He implied that it's a form of power grab attempt by some regional senators. What do you make of this? Well, it could be. It could be. I mean, it's it's possible that uh, a senator might be playing politics as well as using, you know, or apparently legitimate issue. I mean, there's no doubt that Abbaio's leadership has provoked some kind of, um, in, if you like, conspiracy, some kind of fight back by some senators. So I would be surprised if those who are in this crisis themselves also have political, political goals. Uh, that's what National Assembly has always been about, who gets the national the leadership and the have been destabilized. When, when uh, um, the last Senate we had dissenting, even under Saraki, we saw continuous effort to undermine him, and we saw fractionalization, those who defended him and those who, including uh, Omar Gege, others who got rewarded with uh, Senate leadership because they were uh, fighting Saraki. So it won't, be, it won't be out of place that to, to know that some of these senators are also fighting Abibu to use whatever means to, they can to, to destabilize him, meaning remove him, just like he, he got himself in there. So we're going to see this back and forth. But, but for us who are citizens and who are analysts, our concern will be look at the merit of these issues and less about the background political moves, which always will be there. It's part of the business of, of uh, National Assembly politics that they continuously, uh, some of those who are out are looking at how to get in and push, the, the, those who are in are, are looking at how to keep those out permanently out. That's going to, Okoyemi belongs to the Obio uh, group, those outside the Obio group, they will see every of this move as an attempt for them to impeach the credibility and ultimately perhaps get Obio out. So he is correct, but the bigger text here is that something is wrong with the methodology that the National Assembly, the Senate in this case, uses in dealing with some of these issues. Well, I want to say many thanks to you, Dr. Sam Amadi, as we've been discussing on the breaking news that has just come in. Senator Ningi has been suspended by the House for three months. <laughs>